But uh, let me say this before I read the text. You ever been in a situation where it feels like being saved, we know we're going to heaven, but it seems like we struggle and struggle and struggle, and you look around and people that are sinners and people that don't know the Lord, it seems like they just prosper and they have everything. And, and a lot of times, if you're not careful, that'll mess you up. Amen. We're not to look on temporal things. Right. You know, we're to lay up our treasures on high. Uh, but a lot of times, we're human. And we get to look around and we think, man, you know, I'm sure Brother Brian said, you know, my Bible hardly needs a little work and man, I sure wouldn't mind having one of them new Indians or, you know, that's how we are. That's human, you know. Uh, you look around and, and you see somebody, that, I mean, just wicked. Seems like they got everything in the world and here you're just struggling to get by. Well, this text ought to help you a little bit tonight, all right? Uh, so let's begin reading in chapter 37 of Psalms, verse 16. It says, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and the smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth, and payeth not again. But the righteous showeth mercy, and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hmm, kind of sounds like Brother Donald's testimony. Didn't leave me just figure this thing out. Hmm? Steps of the Lord, or steps of a good man are ordered up by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. He is merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you again for the day you've made. We thank you for the blessings of the day. And Lord, I'm thankful even when we don't feel well, it's still a whole lot better being saved and being in the house of God than being out there following after the wicked. And Father, we sure do bless you for being so good to us. Now, Father, I do pray for Miss Judy. God, I pray surgery go well. Guide the surgeon and the nurses. I pray she'd heal rapidly. And Lord, I pray you'd bless her abundantly. Then, Father, we do pray... For our young people, Brother Josh and Miss Brittany, we're going to take them down to camp meeting. They're going to hear great preaching and great singing. And God, I pray you do something for our young people. I pray that you do something so special, they'd bring it back and it'd rub off on us. I pray you'd protect them, give them traveling mercies, give them a wonderful time. Thank you for Brother Josh and Miss Brittany taking away from their daily lives to do this for these kids. And Lord, thank you for our young people. You blessed us with good young people. And Father, we thank you for that. Now, Lord, I pray you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. Use this unworthy vessel. I pray your people would be greatly encouraged. I pray that, Lord, their faith would be strengthened. I pray you'd bless them abundantly from the preaching of the Word of God. We certainly pray if there be any amongst us who've never been saved. They don't know what it is to have the blessings of the righteous in their life. I pray you'd convict them of sin, and God, we'd see them saved by the goodness of God. God, have your will and way now. Bless, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. Here we find the psalmist distinguishes in verses 16 through 22 the difference between the righteous and the wicked. It may seem like the wicked has the upper hand now, but neighbor, you hang on. 
There's coming a day, judgment's going to come, uh, and they're going to get their due. Uh, but you and I that may be struggling along, uh, hey, listen, uh, we know that uh, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Uh, we know that uh, 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 man's days are few and full of trouble. Uh, we know that uh, 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 though he slay me, yet shall I become forth as gold. Uh, we know those verses, uh, but living those verses are not always easy. Uh, but friend, there's a payday coming. Uh, there's coming a day when God's going to reward the righteous. Uh, and Lord, look, it'll be worth it. Uh, it'll be worth every trial. Uh, it'll be worth everything you face. Uh, one day God's going to settle the score, friend. Uh, uh, listen, they'll get what they, what's due them. I told y'all about that guy behind me that was being real belligerent and ugly. I was just praying and hoping and wishing if there'd have been a bottle with a genie in it, I'd have rubbed it and asked this thing. I was hoping that he was uh, one of the preferred customers and he waited in that line all the time and all he had to do was go up there and show him uh, a little barcode on his phone and he could have been in his car and been already wherever he needed. That's what I was hoping. Uh, I don't know if that came to pass because I wasn't waiting around to see, but wouldn't the irony been great right about then, huh? Listen, sometimes uh, we got to put up with some belligerent folks uh, and some uh, folks that uh, uh, just seem like they uh, feel like they're better than us. Uh, but neighbor, there's coming a day uh, when the Lord Jesus shows up uh, and we, my dear friends, come with him. Uh, they'll see that we're not of this world. What a day that's going to be. Uh, we see there's distinguishing in those verses. But I'm, I'm interested in verse 23. Notice the delighting. Look what it says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Hmm? Can I say that the Lord throws the lots in our life? Now, we make the choice which path we're going to go, Amen. and we make the choice whether we're going to obey him. We make the choice, but can I say when the Lord opens up the way for you and I to, uh, to trod, uh, when we trod his paths, we delight in that way. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? Can I say, the happiest you'll ever be is when you're the busiest for Jesus. Right. Hmm? Huh? Uh, an old adage was, an idle mind's the devil's workshop. You get around doing nothing, and guess what? You'll be good for nothing. But if you're busy for the Lord, and you're walking the way the Lord wants you to walk, you'll be happy, happy, happy. And oh, what a blessing. You say, how can you say that? Because the Bible says that. Uh, you do believe the Bible's true, don't you? You do believe in John 3.16, don't you? Well, can I say that verse is just as true as John 3.16? Huh? We see the delighting. We see the distinguishing. Notice the delivering. Look how the Lord delivers his people in verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Aren't you thankful for that? Because in your flesh you fail God every day. And there's days you're going to blow it. But guess what? The Lord don't leave you in the mud puddle you fall in. Hmm? He says, uh, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Uh, I've been young, uh, now I'm old, uh, yet have not seen the righteous forsaking nor seed begging bread. Can I say that you can only fall as far as the Lord's hands? Because his everlasting arms are underneath you and I. And you can't fall any farther than his hands. Uh, and he picks you up, and he dusts you off, and he puts you back on the way, uh, and he says, go get them. Get back after it, huh? Won't be long. Uh, 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 Miss Ella Rose and Miss Elizabeth, are, they're going to be, you know, crawling around, and then they're going to be walking, uh, and when they walk, they're going to fall. You know what we're going to do? We're going to say, uh, you're on your own. No, we're going to pick them up, we're going to dust them off, going to put them back on their feet, pat them on the backside and say, get after it again. Uh, and they'll go a few more steps and they'll fall and you pick them back up. And they, until one day, uh, uh, they not only learn how to walk, they learn how to run. Uh, in that way, the Lord done us, uh, he just keeps picking us up. Uh, dusting us off, uh, putting us back on the path. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, those things that you used to trip over uh, don't even bother you anymore. Uh, and in a blessing, uh, when you learn to run this race with patience, uh, we see the delivering, we see the delighting, we see the distinguishing, but notice the directive in verse 27. It's a pretty good verse right here. It says, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. 
I mean, that's a perfect alliterated verse. He says, depart from evil. Depart. Then he says, do good. Do. And then he says, dwell forevermore. Depart, do, and dwell. That's pretty good life right there. Huh? We're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Anything that even looks like it might be bad, run from it. Depart from it. And then just do good. Huh? Mm, you know the difference between good and bad. Sure. And for him to know to do good, do it not to him and his sin. So just do good. Do what's right. Huh? Always strive to do right. It's never wrong doing right. So d depart, do, and then we'll dwell with him forevermore. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. I'm interested in verse 23. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That word ordered does not mean that God planned every step you'll ever take. Now, the Calvinist wants you to think that. But that's not what it means. That word me, uh, ordered means he fashioned your steps. It means he furnished your steps. And he will finish your steps. God worked in your life to give you a path to trod. He furnished you a way to go, and he fashioned you uh, in order to go that way. God created us to be able to follow him. Oh, what, what a terrible God he would have been if he saved us and then never gave us any, any directives. Right. Just let us live however we want to live. Yeah. That'd be terrible. But he indwells us, and then he's ordered our steps. He's fashioned them, and he's furnished them for us. Uh, and one day he'll finish them when we we'll just go on to be with him. Hmm? I'm interested there where it says the steps of a good man. And I want to just preach on this thought tonight. I want to preach on what's the next step? What's the next step? Now many of you know that before I was preaching, it's hard to believe that I've been preaching 36 years. Lord have mercy. But before I was preaching, before I was pastoring, I should say, which I've been doing that 25, going on 26 years. Before I started pastoring, I was in sales. And I was in sales, sold better men's shoes, sold shoes that cost 800 bucks. And when you go back 30 years ago and a pair of shoes cost 800 bucks, now this is a pair of shoes now. Huh? And if you sold a guy two or three pair of them, you better be good. Huh? I sold good shoes. I didn't sell women's shoes. Don't ask me about that. Men don't like trying on things. <coughs> women like trying on everything and not buying anything. I was a salesman. I was not a trying on person man. Hmm? Uh, I wouldn't have sold women. There wasn't enough money. Donald Trump didn't have enough money for me to sell women's shoes. That wasn't going to happen. But I sold men's shoes back in a day where you gave them full service, where you measured the man's shoes. You measured his foot. Can I say, most people are wearing the wrong shoe, wrong size shoe. And I have a bad habit. I look down and I can look at people's feet and realize if their shoe's too small or too big. Hmm? Well, I've always worn a size six. Yeah, but you've gained 70 pounds. You don't wear six no more. Because hmm? as we grow, so does our feet. We grow outward, so does our feet. Huh? And, and I don't know why I'm on all this. It has nothing to do with the message. But you can tell somebody's wearing wrong size shoe if they get them bunions on the side of their foot. Hmm? Uh, can I say there's no her her heretic gene that causes bunions? You know what causes bunions? Wearing wrong size shoe. Hmm? Oh, that went over real good. <laughs> Buy yourself shoes. And then I got into furniture business. And then I got to where I progressed so much that they... You know, I was the general sales manager of a company. I taught all the other salesmen how to sell and had over, over 100 employees underneath me. And that's what I did. I could sell. And can I say this? Most sales do not happen because the salesman doesn't ask for the sale. How many remember them old Steinberg's commercials? 
where the salesman came home and all he did was talk about what, how, how the refrigerator was made and how a washing machine was and his family, even the dog, the dog would cover up his ears and all that. Can I say, people don't want to go in and have you tell them about every nut and bolt on whatever item you want. They want to know if that item is going to suit their needs. Hmm? But I crack up. I go in and salesmen drive me crazy. You walk in and you look at something. Well, this one's made this way and this one's... I, I don't care, buddy. Huh? I don't care. I'm just here because my wife wanted to come in the store. I'm not... I don't care. But can I say, they don't ask for the sale. Every big ticket item, Miss Rhonda's Mustang. Every big ticket item, there's usually five objectives you've got to overcome to sell it. But there's only one main objective. And everybody always assumes it's price, but that's not always the case. Hmm? But you've got to find out those objectives. And can I say that selling is not telling. I, I, nobody had to tell her a Mustang looks sleek. Nobody had to tell her that that 5.0 would feel good. Nobody had to tell her any of that stuff. Selling's not telling. Selling's asking. You've got to ask her some questions so I can overcome her objectives so I can put the keys in her hand and uh, I can put the commission in my pocket. Hmm? Uh, but I'm saying all that to say this, most salespeople don't ask for the sale. Can I say that most people that interview for a job don't ask for the job and they never get the job. You say, how do I ask for a job, or how do I ask for a sale, and I come across not being pushy? You ask the same question as the title of this message. What's the next step? If I say, what's the next step to somebody interviewing me, that shows I'm interested, and it also makes them commit to me and tell me what the next step is. If uh, I'm trying to sell Miss Rhonda that Mustang and she's liked it, and she's, I'm getting some hesitancy, I have to ask her, what's the next step? What's it going to take? And the more that I ask, the more comfortable she comes with me, be becomes with me because she realizes I'm concerned about her needs and not telling her about the car. And when she gets comfortable enough to hand me her check, we're pals. Hmm? You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? When it comes to God, we don't have victory. We don't have joy. We don't have the full power of the Holy Ghost in our life. We don't overcome things in our life because we're, we don't know how to ask God. What's the next step? Hmm? Now, I made a pretty bold announcement preaching Sunday. We're going to build this building. You say, what have you been doing since? Just asking God, what's the next step? Hmm? Uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. But you've got to know which direction to go and how to go about it and all those kind of things. And can I say, sitting down on God will never accomplish anything. Can I say, I'd rather be busy for God and fail than sit down and not do anything. Hmm? So what's the next step? And, and, and as I was thinking about all this yesterday, the Lord just gave me these thoughts on this message. So we as believers know how to enhance our walk with God. We need to ask the Lord constantly, what's the next step? And how are we to step? Hmm? So can I say, first of all, the next step is a step of persuasion or faith. We've got to learn to walk by faith Amen. and step out on faith. Now, I announced that we're going to build a building, and I also told you I didn't know how we was going to pay for it, didn't know where it was coming from, don't know all those things, but all that's God's business. All I've got to do is take the next step. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 4.12, uh, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision, or who are not of the circumcision only, but also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, uh, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Uh, Paul said that Abraham walked by faith, uh, and uh, uh, being saved it has nothing to do with the law, it has nothing to do with circumcision or uncircumcision, uh, that Abraham, when he took that step, 
of faith. Even he wasn't circumcised. Uh, uh, he, so he says it's a step of faith. Uh, he tells the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, when God told them to cross over Jordan into Canaan land, uh, uh, the high priest put the ark on their shoulders. Uh, they committed themselves to the river Jordan. Uh, Jordan did not part like the Red Sea. Uh, it parted one step at a time. Uh, and friend, uh, all I can tell you is the next step is the right step. It has to be a step of faith. Uh, and God honors faith. Uh, God does not honor laziness. Uh, God does not honor disobedience. Uh, but God does honor faith. Uh, hey, even blind faith. Uh, if we just step out and trust God, uh, God will make a way, my dear friends. Uh, We've seen it happen too much. I remember when we built this building, Brother Randy. They didn't know how we was going to be able to afford it. Uh, some of them complained about the electric bill was going to be so high until I said, okay, we'll go back over on the other building on Wednesday nights and have service over there. All of a sudden, the offerings went up. Uh, you say, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say that if God puts it in our hearts... And we just step out on faith. God will take care of the rest of it. Yes, sir. I, I challenge any of you, instead of taking a big fancy vacation, go down there to Grenada and watch what Jeremy Scott does with nothing and look at how God honors and blesses hmm? Huh? You say, why? Because he just believes God. He's already envisioned this church he's going to build down there in that area where we had that tent. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, he don't even know what land's available but he's already seen the building where there is no vision that people perish. I'm saying, what's the next step? It has to be a step of persuasion. It has to be a step of faith. I'm just going to believe God. I'm just going to trust God. Can I say that's the way I've always lived? Huh? There are some people that worry themselves to death about money. Hmm? Do you worry yourself about notebook paper? Because it's made out of the same stuff. You say, well, no papers, it won't pay for my bills. Well, in honesty, that money you're paying for probably ain't worth much more than a notebook paper. Uh, what I'm saying is we, we worry ourselves to death. And yet even David in this psalm said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Have you ever been hungry? Has God never taken care of you? Uh, is there anywhere in your life that when you stand before God, you're going to say, your promise is wasn't true, I did without? No. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a step of persuasion. God hadn't failed me yet. I've only been walking with him 49 years. I've failed him, and I've missed him. But he's always had the mark out there where I could have seen it. Mm -hmm. Just trying to help you. A lot of people say, well, where's it going to come from? Don't care. That's God's business. My business is to take the next step. That's all he asked me to do. Take the next step. You willing to take the next step? Boy, I had several after church. Boy, they was excited. Yeah, preacher, let's go. I'm ready to go. Huh? Ah! I had some. Well, couldn't get out here quick enough. Huh? Because we kept you too late. What's the next step? It's a step of persuasion. Can I say this? It's a step based upon promise. Look at what Psalms 119 says. Well, you don't have to turn it out, read it to you. Psalms 119, verse 133. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. The psalmist said, for God to order my steps, my steps need to be ordered in his word. Can I say the word of God will never fail you? It's forever settled in heaven. And where does our faith come from? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It amazes me no matter what I'm facing, no matter what problems come my way, no matter uh, how much pressure's on me, if I can get in the Bible, it seems like all that just releases. Why? Because assurance comes from the scriptures. Hmm? And you and I, the next step has to be based upon his word. And I say, if we walk in the pages of God's word, he can't help but bless us. Amen. You know when we get in trouble? When we walk by what we think. 
They'll make the wrong decision every time. So the next step is a step of persuasion. It's a step based upon promise, but it's also a step with a pattern. Now, when I was in upper management, I had to take a conflict course, you know, how to handle conflict between people and, and try and solve it in a nice way because they're going to have to be co-workers for a long time. You don't want people hating each other's guts over something ridiculous. And so in this conflict management, they taught us all kinds of drills and everything. But one thing has always proven true, Brother Donald. People are creatures of habit. All you have to do is watch the pattern of people. And they might clean up their act for a day or two, a week or two. But they always resort back to their pattern. And you can follow people's patterns and determine a whole lot about them. Now, Brother Thad, who is a proponent of the woke crowd, <laughs> he hates it when police officers profile. That's a bad word. That means you're judging me without knowing me. But there are certain patterns that add circumstantial evidence to the profile. Number one, if you're out after midnight and you got a headlight or a taillight out and you're swerving all over the road, you're probably drunk. Either that or you're real sleepy. Hmm? So they can make an assumption based on all the patterns of people they've seen drive after midnight with a headlight or a taillight out who's swerving all over the roads, they've got an issue. That is not judging that person. That is just looking at the patterns of their wisdom and their experience. Amen. Can I say, God has given us a pattern after, uh, for Christians that we ought to pattern our life by. The Bible says uh, in 1 Peter 2.21... For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Uh, we're to pattern our lives after Christ. Did he not say, take up your cross and follow me? We're to follow him. We're to pattern our life after him. When people got in his face and accused him of a lot of things, what did he do? He didn't answer them a word. Do you hear that, young people? The Lord of glory didn't have to defend himself. By the way, you can defend everything but a lie. And if you try to defend yourself on a lie, you make yourself look more guilty. Better not say anything. Hmm? Now listen, you all know I am not a patient person. I'm not. The older I get, the worse I get. I didn't like standing in that line waiting for that rental car, that van, any more than anybody else in that line. But I didn't act like an idiot like that other guy. Matter of fact, part of me wanted to look back at him and say, look, dude, we're all here. None of us like it. But you acting like an idiot isn't going to help things. But then he'd probably said something back, and I didn't want to have Brother Josh have to preach tonight because I was in jail. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Thank you, whoever ain't been that. But yeah, really, I, I didn't want to go to jail over that. There are some things worth going to jail over. An idiot behind you in the line is not one of them. All right? It's just better to keep your mouth shut. Hmm? Huh? I've learned that after 60 years of not keeping my mouth shut. You don't believe that? Ask my Aunt Lynn. I always had a little problem with my mouth. Matter of fact, all the trouble I got in when I was young, it's because of my mouth. Huh? Didn't I? I was always good. But my mouth. If I thought you was an idiot, I'd tell you. Hmm? You know what to cure that, parents? You young kids back talking and saying, a, a good smack in the mouth. You say, well, I don't agree with that. All I know is my mama had it down. She had little bony hands and a couple smacks in the mouth. I learned to keep my mouth shut for at least a week or so. Uh, 
You say, that's child abuse. Call it what, it, what you will. It works. All I know is some of the things they're doing today don't work. They need to change their patterns. Huh? You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. Huh? Try something new. Huh? Cut a switch. Mark their legs up real good with a the switch. They'll think twice before they sass. Hmm? Say, so how you know? Experience. Uh, I'm just saying that we ought to pattern our lives after Christ. We ought to see how he acted when he was accused. We ought to see how he acted when he suffered. We ought to see how he acted when he didn't have a pillow uh, to lay his head upon. Uh, we ought to see how he acted uh, when troubles came. Uh, we ought to listen to how he prayed. We ought to uh, pattern our lives after him. I mean, we're carrying his name. Shouldn't we live up to it? Our next step ought to be a step with a pattern after Christ. Can I say this? What's the next step? It needs to be a step of poise. A step of poise. I've seen some people, they're just all over the place. How many people grew up with Looney Tunes? You know, they still play it on, uh, on that boom channel late at night. I'm, I'm going to DVR them for, for Ella Rose. Y'all remember when Daffy Duck used to get excited? I mean, he was all over the place. He's hitting the walls, ceilings everywhere. He's like, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. That was Daffy Duck. Or some people live their Christian life that way. They're all over the place. Well, that's not how we're to live, live our Christian life. We're to live our Christian life with poise. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.12, When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. What he is telling us in that verse is that we are to take our steps and run our steps carefully, not carelessly. If you're constantly running carelessly, you're never going to amount to anything when it comes to living a Christian life. Huh? Listen. If you listen to false preaching, guess what you're going to believe? Hmm? I had a man tell me one time, well, I like watching Joyce Myers and the Catholic Channel and all. It makes me well-rounded. No, it makes you confused. Right. Amen. Hmm? Listen. Let me talk to my friend Big Bird. If you ever catch me listening to women preaching, take me out back with that beautiful 45 you got and just blow my brains out. You got, you got my permission because I done lost my mind. Huh? I'm not going to listen to something that the Bible declares is wrong. Hmm? Brother Brian, if you catch me sending off money to get one of them anointed handkerchiefs so it'll heal me, <laughs> tie me up the back of that hog and drag me all over town, all right? Because I done lost it. Huh? But there are people who do that, and there are people who, I'm, I'm talking about good, honest people that live on a fixed income will turn over on one of them and send them their money, and that's how they're funded. They prey on weak-minded people. We're not to live our lives carelessly. We're to be good stewards of what God's blessed us with. But we need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Uh, and we need to understand, if I don't listen to truth, I'm going to be led astray. Right. That's what happens to a lot of people. You say, why do people leave a church like ours to go somewhere that's not preaching the truth? Because somewhere along the line, somebody introduced them to falseness and they believed it. Yeah. Right. Hmm? John said that... They were not of us, for if they'd been of us, they would not have left us. Right. Uh, you say, does that everybody mean everybody leaves, leaves out of the will of God? I didn't say that, but I'm just saying this. If somebody leaves and goes to a false church, somebody's introduced them to falseness. And can I say, if you base your Christianity on feeling, you're headed to falseness. Because your feeling's a failure. Right. Sure. There are some days you don't feel well. That doesn't change your salvation. That don't change your walk with God. But if you base everything on emotion, you're Daffy Duck looking for problems. By the way, Daffy always lost. Bugs never lost. I'm a Bugs Bunny fan. Hmm? Huh? He's pretty smart for a rabbit. Hmm? What's up, Doc? Our steps got to be with poise. 
we gotta, we got to make sure we're taking the right steps and we're going in the right direction. Listen, in a congregation the size of ours, people can bring something to the table, don't mean it, it's a wrong ideal. might be a great ideal, but it might not just be for right now. Somebody can have an opinion. It don't mean their opinion's wrong. It just might mean that there might be a better opinion. And you've got to do things with poise. We can't do everything that everybody wants to do. We're going to have trouble if we do that. We've got to make sure we're taking the next step with poise. Yeah. The right step. Now I'll say this lastly. What's the next step? It's got to be a step of prosperity. What is a step with prosperity, preacher? Well, Psalms 18.36 says, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. He gets back to taking that step of faith. When you step out on faith, your step may be landed on something small, but God makes it bigger so you don't slip. Huh? He prospers our steps when we step in the right direction we step out on faith he takes our little steps and make them bigger and make them bigger he enlargeth our steps so we don't stumble hmm? I don't know sometimes how I end up where I end up but I look back and I think boy God sure has been good how did I get to Grenada you ever think about that how did I get there I don't know anybody there couple missionaries come through how do I get there how do I get where I go I'm all the time I had a phone call the other day and somebody asked me if I knew this preacher I said I've heard of him he said well I just talked to him he knows a whole lot about you I'm thinking I never met him how does he know about me who am I what I'm saying friend is when you just walk by faith it's amazing how God enlarges things I've told you that the sun never sets on the ministry of our church now look around, this little church. You wouldn't believe how prosperous we are in the kingdom of God. God has enlarged our church long beyond our coast. And can I say, folks around the world know about our church. Hmm? Did you hear that fellow that come up with Crossroads from Brother Rocky? Did you hear what he said? He said, I have waited for a long time to come to the great Emmanuel Baptist Church. That's what he said. Hmm? How did he hear it was great? Because the word has traveled. The Lord has prospered our church. Because for one way or another, Brother Clint, we've just learned to take a few steps of faith. I wonder where we'd be if we'd take a lot of steps of faith. Because hmm? that's the next step. Is just keep walking. Keep taking steps. I'll be real honest with you. At my age, I'm scared to death of what the next step is. I have no idea how all that's going to get done out front. I just know it will. How do you know that? I know the master. He wouldn't put it in my heart had he not got a plan. I don't need to know the details. I just need to know him. Hmm? I get phone calls all the time. It scares me to death. Well, how's that going to work out? And how's that? I had a guy call me just this week. He said, can you come and preach? Yeah, never been to this church. Wouldn't know one person in the church other than I met the pastor. huh? And I'm going to some part of Florida I'd never even heard of. Huh? I don't even know how to get there. But Google does. huh? You say, what are you trying to say? I'm just saying we just need to keep walking by faith. Taking those steps. It's dangerous when we don't take steps. You're on the front row. Take another step. Say, so where's the next step? I don't know. Just take it. Just keep taking steps. Huh? Brother Clint, look around. We didn't get here because you and your daddy, your brother, decided you wasn't going to take a step. Mm -hmm. All odds were against you all. A lot of pressure on you all to vote to shut her down. But you took a step. Hmm? Now there's a lot of people don't know much about you, but Jesus does. And I, I want to see, I want to be there when he rewards you. 
every blessing I've ever got in this church. Somebody took a step. I just want to keep taking steps. Huh? Just keep taking steps. He didn't say jump. Just said take a step. Because our, our steps are ordered by Him. We just need to delight in the way. And Brother Ray, if somebody don't want to step with us, we'll just leave them behind. We'll just keep taking steps. We've taken a lot of steps together over the last 25 years. Lord have mercy. I got bunions. Yeah, I know you got bunions. Because you're wearing wrong size shoes. You used to buy them nine mediums and you needed a nine extra wide. And now you're in the nine extra wide or you're probably in about 11 extra wide to get that bunion in there, huh? Uh, somebody pray for Brother Ray to get bunion surgery. No, don't. I've never known anybody had bunion surgery that it, it went well. Their feet hurt them worse after bunion surgery. Huh? Why are we talking about bunions in church? How did we get here? I don't know either, but we did. Huh? Just keep walking. Them bunions take care of themselves. That's all I know to tell you. Huh? Listen. The older we get, our steps may get slower, but we need to still keep stepping. Huh? These young people need to see folks that still know how to step. Uh-uh. Just keep stepping. Say, preacher, what's the next step? All I know is the next step's towards Jesus. He said, draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to thee. Just keep walking towards him till you run into him is all I can tell you, friend. He said, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. What's the next step? Toward Jesus. Hmm? Can I say, you can't walk toward Jesus and have your mind somewhere else. Just keep stepping by faith toward Jesus. I wish I had all the answers, but friends, even half of it's not been told yet. All I know is God honors people that are stepping towards Him. So let's do all we can do while we have an opportunity to do something, all right? Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song. Maybe you want to come and say, Lord, what particular step do you want me to take? Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord you're able to take a step. Maybe you want to come and just tell Him you love Him. Maybe you want to come and just thank Him for this church. I don't know. But uh, I know one thing just keeps taking steps because He honors it. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for all these that have come, and there's some in their their pews praying and thanking you for your goodness. Lord, just help us keep taking steps of faith towards you. God, we'll trust you to take care of all the answers. We'll just come seeking you. Nowhere in the Bible did you tell us to have all the answers. But you did tell us to depend on you and to trust in you and to seek your face. God help us to do that bless now Lord I know it wasn't a salvation message God if there's somebody here tonight lost I pray they'd come get born again bless as only you can we'll thank you for it in Jesus name Amen Turn what? do you struggle to find good Bible based resources to supplement your personal devotions if so head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on bookstore where we have a ton of resources and as always thanks for listening